Hello and welcome to our third lecture where I'm going to discuss a few examples of cloud virtual networks uh, to provide uh, additional context about IPOP. So I'm going to highlight uh, three representative but different examples of virtual networks. One is the Amazon Virtual Private uh, Cloud. Uh, the other is a general technology that can be used as a basis for virtualization called OpenFlow. And the last one is an infrastructure as a service uh, open source implementation that's part of the OpenStack um, IAS uh, cloud software called Neutron. So Amazon VPC gives you an example of one use case of virtual networks in the cloud. It allows you to take your private network in your enterprise and extend it with virtual machines that are running on the Amazon infrastructure. And the virtual network essentially creates uh, the link between your private enterprise network and your virtual machines in the Amazon infrastructure. So that could be useful in multi-tier applications where, or when you are bursting, as I mentioned in lecture number one, a workload that goes beyond the capacity of your local computers to run it on the cloud. So if you look at uh, the description of this service, it, uh, I'm highlighting some of the keywords that we already uh, brought up in the context of why virtualization is useful provides privacy isolation, allows you to define your own network, which you have complete control over. You can select your own IP addresses, you can select your own subnets, and it creates a, a VPN connection back to your corporate uh, uh, data center. So for example, as a user of VPC, you could have on the left-hand side your existing infrastructure, and you need to add capacity to it, you go and buy virtual machines on Amazon, and through the virtual uh, private network, you can create a connection between uh, your uh, infrastructure and your infrastructure on Amazon. And that's isolated from other users who are uh, using the Amazon infrastructure as well. So you don't have to worry about uh, users, uh, let's say, eavesdropping on your traffic or connecting machines to your network. And you get your own management of your own uh, namespace uh, of IP addresses. So, for example, this is a private IP address block on your local air network, you can just add one machine, let's say on Amazon infrastructure that will connect to the same uh, subnet that you have in your local environment. And that facilitates you to deploy and manage existing applications. Uh, Amazon provides a nice console for you to set this up and manage your networks, but this is Amazon specific virtual networks. This is only available between Amazon and you. If you want to create virtual networks across multiple cloud providers, that's not sufficient. Um, another technology I wanted to highlight, this is not a, a cloud virtual network per se, but can be used to create cloud virtual networks. OpenFlow is an open platform that supports uh, the so-called Software Defined Network, or SDN model. And it's an interface standardized by the ONF, Open Networking Foundation. What it essentially means, it provides you the ability to set up uh, what I described in lecture, uh, the previous lecture, where you, when you need to virtualize the network, you need to be able to intercept events and you need to be able to uh, manipulate, let's say, a packet in the context of the virtual network that that's, uh, uh, the interface is bound to. So OpenFlow essentially provides you with the mechanisms and uh, a standard that allows you to implement uh, packet processing rules on networking infrastructure. That could be on switches, on routers, or it could be on software. Uh, switches and routers also running on a computer. Uh, uh, for example, OpenVSwitch is an open source implementation of a software switch that exposes OpenFlow. So OpenFlow works, uh, for example, in a switch. Uh, an OpenFlow enabled switch would allow you to program it to, let's say, take a packet that's coming uh, through port number A and apply a set of rules, a set of flow table rules uh, that are programmed through the OpenFlow API before the packet goes out, let's say, to another port number B. And these rules could be as simple as matching, uh, let's say, a, a VLAN tag and forwarding to the proper output port, but can be more complex and uh, exercise behavior that um, presents you with the ability to create virtual networks that can be quite flexible. But typically, again, running on the infrastructure itself, so assuming that you have control over all the devices that can be programmed under the OpenFlow protocol. 
But a device uh, under OpenFlow, again, this could be a network switch, could be a network router, or could be a virtual switch, let's say, running as software uh, together with your operating system or virtual machine. But basically, there's a data path where packets come through an input port and they go through a number of tables, a pipeline of flow tables, and these are the rules that describe what to do with the packet. And then eventually the packet typically goes out to an output port. So these flow tables allow hardware speed, uh, fast processing of packets going through this network device. And they are programmed by the controller through a secure channel and through the open flow protocol. So if a flow matches uh, a, a a uh, set of rules that have been programmed by the controller, the packet flows through the network without any intervention of uh, external software. So this is done at high speed, 10 gigabit per second, 40 gigabit per second. But if a packet does not find a matching rule in the flow table, this creates an event, uh, again, uh, akin to the abstraction that we discussed in the previous lecture. This event can be handled by the controller. So the controller can decide what to do with this packet. It may decide to forward this packet on its own, or it may decide to create a new rule uh, through uh, the OpenFlow protocol to add or update a particular flow table so that the next packet around may be able to be processed directly uh, by the switch. So OpenFlow provides primitives for virtualization for intercepting and manipulating packets with a high tru throughput data uh, path. And that can be done on layer two and layer three and with hardware and software implementation. So you can see this as a basis for implementing all sorts of virtual networks, and there's uh, a lot of active research in uh, the use of OpenFlow for novel uh, networking uh, uh, techniques. And finally, OpenStack Neutron. This is not a virtual network per se, but basically manages uh, virtual networks within the context of a private um, OpenStack cloud. So it allows uh, a user of OpenStack, OpenStack uh, users can create virtual machines on a cloud infrastructure. OpenStack Neutron allows you uh, to create virtual networks. So you can manage virtual switches like an open flow switch as described and create, uh, uh, for example, a multi-tenant um, uh, virtual network within a cloud. So several users here, for example, uh, the red uh, green and yellow users can create virtual machines using OpenStack and a user for example can uh, request from the OpenStack service to create not only virtual machines but also a virtual LAN connecting these virtual machines. So OpenStack has the software that uh, orchestrates the creation the bootstrapping of virtual machines on, on servers and also to create a virtual network and that could be uh, programmed through the OpenFlow interface that I described in the previous slide. Um, so from the user perspective, what they see is a virtual network of virtual machines connected by a virtual switch. On the infrastructure itself, you have a combination of multiple servers running multiple uh, virtual machines, and you have a virtual switch on each endpoint, and you have physical switches in between. All of this is abstracted and presented to the user as a uh, flat, so to speak, virtual network of virtual machines managed by the OpenStack service. Now, these are typically used to create virtual networks within a cloud or perhaps between an enterprise and a cloud. But when you want to create virtual networks that span across multiple domains where you don't have the ability to uh, program devices on all these domains, for example, multiple competing uh, cloud infrastructures or multiple institutions running their own private clouds, it's important to have approaches that do not rely on programming uh, all the network devices uh, in the path between your two endpoints. So we're going to begin to see in the next lecture approaches that use tunneling uh, to allow you to connect among uh, multiple virtual network providers through inter-cloud virtual networks.